What is up guys and welcome back to the channel and to a very exciting video today I'm talking to Mike over from the fake skate video game team talking about their game that is under development so you may have heard about this already you may have seen a video which we will actually go fully in depth on and Mike will explain everything that we're seeing but if you have any questions about like what will the customization be for this game what will the physics be which is the, the this is going to be crazy so stay tuned for that it is a long video but it's going to be talks about animations the realism object dropper like filming and camera setups in the game is it going to come out on consoles so yeah let's just jump into this interview with mike and first of all go over who are part of the fake skate development team give a warm welcome to mike aka one mode as part of fake skate the game thanks jake for having me and just even doing a video on this and kind of going over a little bit more detail on what we're doing i'm the art director i basically make sure that everything is in line with like skateboarding the look and feel um make sure the entirety of trueness of skateboarding is embodied in a way that we're willing to project it i make fancy pictures uh <laughs> fro is our main developer he is the one doing most 99 percent of pretty much everything in unity we are a unity game get that out of the way and we have reasons for being on unity which we'll get into and fro is basically doing the impossible um and then validus validus is our main mapper he is handling most of the mapping for the entire game uh assets etc uh, i help a little bit in assets too but validus is in charge of that along with optimization heavily focusing into future of unity builds and making sure that our game is running well and also that can be future proof. We know that experiences is super important and to have a large scale map like what we're doing, we need to have that in the groundwork early. Uh, and then we have J Boogie. Um, J Boogie is in charge of all sound, helping with videos and our go to guy of breaking the game. Uh, he is probably the best person to break games and we're super stoked that his role is very important in when we get into alpha stages and troubleshooting before uh, coming out to people. That's awesome. And uh, you mentioned something about having like the groundworks figured out before coming up with all other stuff. I guess that goes as well with like getting the mechanics down before stuff like animations or yeah i don't know i i guess it's still like on a very early level right yeah and kind of like a little like snippet like kind of what 2023 was just to kind of go into this video 2023 was very much like an exploratory year for fake skate there's a lot of visions that we had for a fake skate based on previous games that we've all played for the many years we're basically taking all the things that we love all the things that we don't like and making notes of them we also have our discord which is you know open to the public there's tons of suggestions there's been hundreds and hundreds of suggestions so we've every week we've had meetings talking about them going through them um, making sure that we're hitting all the check marks and also all the pain points and fixing the pain points that people have had in a game um and that's like really important the number one thing is like we're a community game the game was created from being a part of the community you know we have some backgrounds and and we specialize in these things in real life and forming this team has been really fantastic because i think we have like the perfect four uh we work super well together there's no hiccups this is a passion project we're not dealing with money like at all for the past year and a half we're just doing it because we want to do it so at this point, I hope you have an idea of who's working on this game, what their passion levels are and and everything about that. But right now we're going to go over like the video they released at the end of 23, I think, which just showed like all of that year's development in a very short video. So everything is going to be a bit more focused here, but we also kind of go off on things and uh, just talk about what's important in a realistic skateboarding game like fake skate we're definitely on track so we're actually ahead of track 
on what we future thought we were going to be at. We initially thought this game was going to take, you know, upwards to like four years. We're actually kind of far. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of the problems and a lot of the problem solving uh, has been solved. And we'll play the video and kind of go through those. Awesome. I'm just going to hit it. Just a nice start. So this too, like even in here, there's a little snippet. Um, just kind of want to call it out. There's actually inside of this animation, there's a foot and the foot is actually calling out to um, the original game of XL, which was called Push. So it's a little bit of an homage to what started it all into this hyper realism. And there's like the foot. Uh, pushing so there's a little homage there to john and all the work he did laying the groundwork for an amazing platform uh of games subtle details <laughs> <laughs> shout out don mclennan uh giving us a bunch of music and all sort of stuff and here we see basically a, a bunch of like the mechanics of how the board works right yeah, so like right here is like, um, basically it's all in order. So from the start of the year to the end of the year. And this is the basic premise of trial and error. Um, having separate wheel colliders versus uh, separate meshes, etc. Like trying to figure out what works the best and these little nuances of like bumps. How do we make it more realistic? How does it detect bumps? Um, that sort of thing. And that gets like more and more progressive as the video moves. Here it looks like super, you know, jarring because this <laughs> is like the first like month of working on it, essentially. And that's Jake um, Boogie, right? Yeah, Boogie dancing away, <laughs> jiggling. So we did for our first promo and our first announcement, we did a bunch of 3D scans just for testing and trying to figuring out how and what we can do with it. Um, these are like the first initial 3D scans. They're not that great. They're using like a phone. So now we have fast forward. Now we actually have like a rig that works. You'll notice in a lot of the early footage that there's like two by fours as feet, stuff like that. That's all just placeholders until we found a rig um, that could really work and be adaptable. Um, or customization, and we'll we'll see that later too. So I guess a lot of people not really being into game development like myself might think here, wow, the character is so stiff. <laughs> but I mean, that's a thing that comes later down the line, right? Yeah. So right now the main focus is the board. The board, the character is super important, but we're building them together as one. But the rig can be changed out, and it's really easy to implement that when we're thinking about it. Uh, instead of just thinking about the board and then the character is just like, you know, you know the same animations for landing. We're not going to have that um, because we're thinking about the character as in partnership with the board. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, I, I do want to point out here, this is like a kind of an important spot. Uh, and this goes into why we chose Unity. This here is Validus' map from XL that he made. And then the next map is actually Brawl Unit's map as a test. Um, so this is kind of showing that we already have integrated um, the ability to pull in previous projects uh, and supporting the modding community and not letting those assets go to waste, I would say. A lot of people put in a lot of work and a lot of time into building maps and building content. We've already kind of load up your map, you know, load up your favorite maps that you want to play. This approach also meant that our system of grinds, uh, we don't have splines. We have removed splines. Everything is splined, basically. Anything is grindable. So this opens the door to anything built in Unity it can, can be imported. And you do with what... <laughs> <laughs> it is you do, but this is the fun part about modders and the fun part about supporting modding. It's very important that you have that freedom um, to have fun. That alleviates a lot of the pain points in map making. Uh, splines are kind of a nightmare. 
uh, <laughs> and just broken spines everywhere. You know what I mean. You know the feeling. <laughs> I, I've actually been wanting to ask you about this, but I don't know if it's too early on. Just like the name Fake Skate, it definitely implies like the whole community that came about with Skate or Excel, all the uh, the fake brands and and teams and stuff. Is it mainly going to be a PC game, or is it just too early to tell right now? Is there going to be like, I don't I don't want to say it uh, like this, but the thing that kind of comes to mind is just Skate or Excel having like a lesser version on console. Mm-hmm. But I I guess there's ways to figure that out with something like their mod browser that could work a bit better. I don't think that there's gonna be a, a roadblock there. Um, we definitely are aiming to PC first, yeah. only because like alpha testing is really easy that way. Um, going through Steam uh, is gonna be simpler, that sort of thing. Uh, these are all like, I know this could change, um, but our current goal is to like pc first we are planning for console that is like one of our top tier in our list is to like release a game that doesn't need to be modded to console that's like pretty much the goal to this game um and we all know that like modded games that we love are the best they're literally embody like skateboarding and they like really push the envelope into realism so we're trying to give that experience to everyone we aren't doing switch (laughs) i'll say that um i will confirm we are never doing switch okay Um, (laughs) and that's that's purely because of the how hard it is to go on switch it's a very difficult process and we just don't see that but i I like the fact that you said you said gravity uh, about a console version not really taking a dig at anyone there but i think we all know that you know with a certain game we might have a more enjoyable experience on console had that been something you could adjust at least mm-hmm. and it's and to kind of go into that point there's no no jabs and no nothing um to any other game we love all the skateboarding games we play them all um we do all that sort of stuff and we have a massive appreciation to every skate game that came out. We're just doing something that's um, pushing that boundary further. We're really, really trying to push the envelope of what skateboarding is in a skate sim. We, we don't even like to call it sim, but it's like the closest thing to skateboarding and the feeling of skateboarding that you can possibly get. Um, that's our main goal. It's not a competition of who's skate game or anything like that. We're just trying to do the best possible work we can. That's awesome. There we got a bit of the poles you were talking about. Yeah. So here's like kind of like the two by four feet. Um, This is mostly to test the catching system, uh, how that works and basically prototyping. This is like early prototyping of like the catch detection. Um, how that works and how unique it is. Uh, this is like trying to add a character, a rig, early rig that doesn't really work. And then getting into this, you can kind of see the transition. So here you can see the actual foot flicking. So these are procedural physics based like animations. Um, they're not so much animations, but they're just coded that way. So you have full control over the things and that basically causes a challenge into the rig. And that's where we get into how we fix that and how do we prototype that and how do we uh, constantly evolve that process. And to kind of go into it, I want to give like a note from Fro, the authenticity of catches and the collider, how they interact with the skateboard it's kind of designated to a trigger area. So without relying on animations is the struggle. It's the hard part. Basically the method that he's figured out allows a lot of control and a lot of chances to be able to be modded. Um, It gives a lot of options and a lot of free reigns. Further experimentation led to development of procedural like kicks and foot placements. An endeavor initially challenged by rig limitations, which kind of is shown here, 
but adjustments were made and focuses on the feet only, which ties into removing the body completely and focusing heavily on feet. This allows to focus on the feet and the animations and the rig can be attached to it later. This allows us to throw to focus on the core core mechanics and work out all those problems much easier. I think uh, we've talked about this game before just on our like own personal times and I don't know if you can get into this, I can cut it out if if we can't talk about it, but as you said, the, uh, the rig, the uh, character was going to be purely f- like physical. So I guess just focusing on the feet, you could get like natural movements later on, connecting to those, bending the right so, ways. Yeah, so each part of the rig has weights. So they're called weights. And each part of the weight is coded with a physics-based coding. And so essentially what that means, and it kind of will get into the video here, uh, when you see Boogie kind of jumping around and you can kind of see the rig in this scene here. You can see how it's being changed, it's being moved, it's being positioned. There's a lot of control in there. Um, along with oh boy i'm pretty sure probably 99 percent of people might have skipped over and that is board flexing so similar to real life the board actually flexes and based on your foot positions wow i see that now i didn't think about that when i saw this video originally so it happens very quickly but it's a really important part of skateboarding and if you ever watch a skateboard in like slow motion you really really see it so it's something so subtle that you probably don't really notice watching skate videos or skating um but it's subtle enough that we want to implement it in the game and it just adds another level of realism i i I think it makes great sense i mean if i think back to any game i've recorded some realistic clips in skate 3 skate 2 skater excel session it it's it it might actually look sometimes like the board is too stiff in a way just you know when you turn there's also going to be that whole board flexing so i think that's an amazing detail i'm so happy i'm catching it now like with my live reaction and that was one of the biggest things too is like stiffness that was like the number one con uh that everyone kind of came up with about all skateboarding games is that they feel stiff so our one of our biggest focuses is to make it feel more natural uh have more fluency have more weights to the character can be more free um more lively right even the board um for instance like kind of an example on that is wheels think about how wheels work how they spin how they rotate Each one of our wheels are separate, so they have their own physics based on each wheel. Every grind you do, if you do a crooked grind, the wheel that's pinching isn't going to rotate. The other wheels will rotate, and they'll rotate in different speeds based on which popped off first or last. So it's all connected, and it gives that... Yeah, it's like a little, little detail that maybe the normal person might not notice, but when you do see it and play it it's just gonna feel normal that's kind of the thing we don't want people to notice them i I guess what you're saying it's a bit like the what's called the uncanny valley that you know this kind of removes that part and goes full on like this looks the way it should look like there's not gonna be a tiny part where it's like wow yeah i guess all four wheels were spinning on that crooked grind and that's kind of exactly it now if you look into like you start looking into like other games and and you start looking for it you'll be like oh like that's that's like a thing um and you'll notice how stiff boards are and etc but in the moment it feels fine you know you're having fun you're playing a game Um, i think you've already ruined like all skate games for me now (laughs) that's not the goal um (laughs) but definitely it's just a an added layer of immersion going back into like the physics of the body this is kind of there it is it's based on your jump your height your physics on how high and low velocity um 
this is like heavy, heavy into physics coding um, from Froze side. So essentially it's calculating how high they're jumping and when they compress how much weight is being distributed. So you're never going to get the same landing twice. You're never going to get the same, like anim there's no animation to it. We'll have some animations to blend to make it look pretty, but in reality, it's very fluent. It's very like natural. Um, hopefully too, and I'm just kind of putting this out there, we'll probably have like weights to like arm steez. Um, So like, you know, like Antoine has like weighted arms, <laughs> right? His arms don't really move that much. So it'd be nice to have some sort of um, addition to that where you can set how crazy they go. <laughs> Oh, that is awesome. I really want to ask too, because this is something I've experienced in uh, in two of the more recent uh, video games, that arms can go through the legs on landings. I'm guessing that's not going to be a part if it's like physical and, and a solid matter. Right after this clip, there's a little tiny like three second clip. So right here, this is like typical pretty much all video games kind of have this problem of like arm clipping into the body, uh, self mesh, like overlapping. Uh, we've already fixed it. So there is no, it's so quick in this video. I know. Um, but it's already fixed. It has a variable that doesn't allow it to, it's like a magnet. So it looks natural. That's the best kind of way I can describe it. Think of a, two magnets that you can't stick together and they kind of do this wave. It'll be similar to that. So it can't actually, it kind of looks really natural uh, when your hand hits your leg because it has a little bit of a movement. Oh, that is awesome. Which, which is really nice. And then this goes right back into clothing and what we're doing with clothing. Clothing is going to be a lot more user friendly um, with different shape sizes of bodies, that sort of thing. The goal is to have one t shirt mesh and it be able to be adaptable to all shapes and sizes. That's our goal. Um, so that you're not having to have multiple meshes of like different shirt styles. And, you know, if you wanted a shirt to be longer, we want to have the option to be able to do that uh, or shorter. Like if you wanted a crop top or you wanted a tall tee, like we want to be able to have that option in game rather than being a separate t-shirt. You can customize it yourself. That's, that's a big goal of ours. We don't know if that's going to be confirmed or not, but like we're trying to do that. Oh boy, <laughs> there's so much fun stuff. You also, you already got an object dropper. We do have an object dropper. Uh, it, it's also very interesting and in how it works. It's very different than typical games uh, has done. So it actually has mesh detection. So it can detect when something's rounded, anything like that. And you can place it on things very accurately so it doesn't snap like all weird you know when you play a game and it's like you're just trying to get it on the stairs you want like a ledge down the stairs or something this has a really unique system where it makes it a lot easier to do that um oh, and along to it has physics as well so you can drop things uh you can raise them into the air and drop them and they'll naturally fall oh, um, nice and hopefully push them around um, move them. Well, we're getting into a big thing here too. Um, wall rides. Oh, that Wally was cool. How about a wall rides? So, wall rides are very, very important. Um, pushing the genre of tricks, pushing the amount of tricks that you can do, having impossibles. Um, we're exploring how to make things like how to use the controller to do front foot impossibles. We're trying to push the level of like the immersion of like the controller. And this is going to be an ongoing thing for us. 
is trying to get as many tricks in as possible with it feeling natural. Just know that we're working on it. We're we're doing it. We're coming in at it with like a skateboarder's mentality and the possibilities are endless, similar to skateboarding. And I'm sure there's like tricks that you want to do in, a, in other games and you can't do them. Uh, or you can and they may not look right. I think we've all experienced that at some point. Yeah, and you know, nothing towards any of the other uh, games that have been out there, but like Impossibles have always been a tricky thing. When you get into physics, like uh, XL is, and I don't really like comparing other games, but it's cool. <laughs> um, we're, all, we're all friendly and fun. But when you get into games that are physics-based, like XL, there's a reason why there isn't Impossibles in it, because it's really hard to do. It's really difficult, and we're pushing that, and we're trying to get there. Um, Froze figured out Impossibles to a degree um, with modifiers, so we're pretty happy, and it's kind of pushing the envelope into what we can do. Uh, so our minds are just going, Whew! like, okay, what's next? Can you... Can you Casper flip in midair? I, I was going to ask about that. <laughs> so we'll get to that point like later on and more so like what's possible. We're basically still in prototype stage, um, to be honest, um, because everything is a failure. To make the best game, you have to fail. You have to keep failing and failing and failing in order to come up with the best way to do something uh not in, you can objectively say it's the best but the most way that will suit skateboarding i guess would be the best correct way to say that i, I think it was interesting you said uh, you had to use a modifier to get something like impossibles i'm guessing that has to be an option for like a lot of different things because it's so hard to like cram so many tricks into a game and that might be why previous games have failed on certain points had something really great but i'm guessing that's like a way to do that go about it there, there's just limitations yeah um for, for instance like three flips conflict with impossibles or 360 shoves conflict with impossibles you need some way to keep your foot attached so a modifier for instance could tell the engine to you know keep keep back foot on like the grip tape for instance there's little snippets of things that you could do with modifiers and you know button controls and that sort of thing but it's coming up with them and it's making them and elevating the control scheme that works with skateboarding and then it doesn't feel weird if that makes sense yeah definitely but yeah we don't want to change too much of the controls of just what everyone's used to but there's certain things that we do have to change uh this is like probably our number one request our number one priority is character customization in game we are doing our best and our absolute time into this part um full control body shape size male female every skin tone color you know options it does look super in depth and i actually think this has been kind of lacking in in at least skateboarding games for a while i feel like the old tony hawk games did a pretty good job but then the later ones kind of removed some of the features and the same thing with like skate one you had more control over like the uh, the fat and and the muscles and stuff like mm -hmm. that but just you have i can see you have height on there you got neck and it all just fits into this like rigid character or yeah and we're and we're really hoping to get into really granular like foot size like etc that's kind of like going back to like the clothing being auto scalable uh to the character similar would be the shoes uh, the foot size it was always kind of my gripe like a lot of fake skaters that are like core i'm gonna say core but like that are really into fake skating um, maybe because they can't skate anymore um they enjoy making content video video parts etc 
they're trying to emulate themselves and they're trying to emulate their character so we want you can't be your character and you have size nine feet and you have size 15 feet in the game it doesn't look right mm -hmm. um so getting those little details of the character is really important as well um just to it's your expression right and over the years of like even playing into the community and like streaming and all that sort of stuff the amount of people that play this game because they can't skate is really incredible they play fake skating games to get the itch of skateboarding um that's why there's also a lot of canadians because of our winters uh, <laughs> i guess the same thing for danish people here yeah but it's a really great way to kind of get that fix out and i think we can land into the market of a different version um and kind of to go back into like comparisons and that sort of stuff we're all excited for skate we're so excited to play skate it's gonna be fun mm. that game looks so fun right our game is a total different parallel of that uh ours is like very attention to details like you you're not going to be able to run around and parkour and have this fun immersive experience like skate will like that but ours is going to be a lot more detail oriented to making videos and uh, the actual skateboarding itself and lending to that and to kind of go full circle into that there's a little there's a little clip with the camera system and so we didn't really show off anything here. So right here, camera system. We think that we're pretty unique in this platform for camera options. These here aren't final camera options, but essentially emulating real life cameras. This is kind of the premise. And if you know who I am and you know what I've done uh, and what I continue to do in real life and in fake skating world, cameras are very important to me. And this is a huge point that I'm heavily invested in. Making sure that this is correct is really, really important. I will give away a little bit. Um, what you see here is a Panasonic layout. So an HVX to be specific. And you can kind of fill in the blanks, but like, let's say there's a, a VX1000 option. Your menu changes. So the whole UI changes. Wow. So you're immersed into that world but also to the filter changes the lens you pick changes the fov it changes the game you can mix and match you can combine and have fun and put a you know the little 37 mil the little 37 mil fish eye the little guy put it on a big hvx if you want to you know um so there's a lot of play and a lot of fun with the filming side this opens the door to more and we'll have more information on this this will be more than likely a video this year uh kind of going more in depth of the camera systems and what we're doing and how we're achieving that um it's actually i'm just gonna say it, it's one to one so be on the lookout for their updated video on like the filming and camera setups for this game. It is pretty exciting to me that you can have real life one to one versions in a video game of like certain things, you know, like the, the Deathlands, the VX 1000 and stuff like that. So very excited for that. But here at the end, I think we just kind of go over some of the things that I'm interested in. And then at the end, there's a little sneak peek of like what the visuals are potentially going to be like for this game, where Mike also explains a bit further about like wax marks and, and textures and stuff like that. But yeah, let's just play that part. Like, look at those clips just seem so cool to me. Also, the fact that you're not like stopping on the wall on that like almost wall stop ollie out kind of like start to slip down and really see like the the physics of it i feel like and, and that's exactly it um the early integration of wall rides and pole jams um there was little things with the pole jam like the wheels actually depict how it comes off the pole jam um 
the board, the, like the way that the the coding is coded in the core mechanics of the game allows for wall rides uh, from the beginning. It's not added after, and that's kind of the difference of what our stand is on the game itself. Like we already know the issues of other games. We already know the pros of other games. We've played them all and we've put thousands of hours into all of them. Um, and that's kind of puts us in a very unique position to make a game. I think that's kind of the best way to say it. Putting all these hours into previous skateboarding games over the past, you know, 20 years, it really lends you to have a really high knowledge based on what's good, what's bad, and also directly talking to the community and having a suggestions box in our Discord. And I greatly, greatly recommend anyone that wants to join, join and communicate. Um, we, we are definitely listening and we're definitely reading every single suggestion that comes through as dumb or good as they are because any idea can be translated and spark another idea and it only helps speed up our process and fine tune our end goals i really wanted to ask about one clip here where you could kind of see the sound impacts of a part of yes. the board so that also really ties into the realism right that things sound right because that's so important in skateboarding i have these problems with my ears and i can barely hear at the moment and my sessions the last couple of days have just been kind of odd not hearing the pop, not hearing the grind as much. So I got to get that fixed. First of all, I am, I have an appointment, but it just ties into like the simulation feel so much, right? This is exactly it. So you're enhancing the experience of skateboarding and a huge part of it is sound. Um, this is where Boogie comes in. This is where myself comes in, uh, having all these cameras um using these cameras and getting the audio right is super important the mesh the way that it's dynamic the mesh can be changed like this is one of the coolest aspects to it and it's kind of thrown in there you see a little lightning uh mcqueen car at the end um this is kind of a joke obviously um, but it really shows that you can put anything there as the board and the way that it's coded and the way that the system works is that the pop mechanism is actually true. So when that tail hits, it does make the sound. So it gets really granular here because this, for instance, on this clip, the nose is short. It's an old school board. It takes a lot for that nose to hit. But if you notice, like it took a lot for it to get vertical. But if you popped and it didn't touch, you're not going to get a pop sound. So this is very important. The immersion of like listening to audio, it, it just adds to it. You can tell if your board popped by hearing it. Yeah, and you you could uh, you could feel something was wrong in the beginning of Skater XL when you heard a pop sound, like just riding or bumping out of a crook. That that always felt kind of fun to me. If you pop out of grinds, you you heard a very distinctive sound until you yeah. got the uh, the sound mod in there. I think a lot of skate games are like that too. Um, just mainly because it's it's really difficult to do. I guess you're feeling a lot of that now being in the position of making a game and essentially trying to do something new or in a new way, like inventing something new, I guess. It, yeah, it basically is. It, it's basically onto that point of inventing something new, but not really inventing the wheel. Expectations, we're doing the best we can and we're trying to get something out the door um when it's ready and no dates yeah <laughs> and I, I think that's that's what we love to hear like it, it it might get might be done when it's done and you know as you said like testing there might be some phases where we can help out and test the game try it out but it might not be a finished experience like i think yeah skater excel did that session has done that as well exactly and I do want to kind of touch a little tiny bit onto 
just kind of like the faith and like kind of what skateboarding games are. I, I really want to make this predominant. All four of us skate. We've skated for a long time. We love skateboarding, like in and out. We're not going anywhere. I just want to nuke that. We are fully committed to this game and doing so without money. Uh, and we're doing this on purpose. Keeps it core. Keeps it the passion. Keeps that level headedness right. And if that takes, for instance, if that makes it take, you know, longer, then so be it. Our product that w what we're making is more important than a paycheck. Yeah. Or a cash grab. And I, I guess that like gives the fans the, the best outcome possible for a project like this. Yeah. And, you know, like money's money, right? Money's nice. Sure. Um, but when we get to that point, we really want to get the community and we really want to get them paid. Uh, we've learned through that. And if we do become successful and that's great, you know, we would love to have creators. We would love to have map makers. We would love to give back into that whole realm in that space because it is a community game. Yeah, man. And uh, I guess we've been talking for a while at this point. I have a lot of editing to do. Are there any final points we should get out the way? Or, yeah, do you want to show me some of what you sent me earlier? Here's a little exclusive look into what our testing facility is and what to expect for an alpha map and this will more likely be part one with the ability to expand alpha. Enjoy. Four skaters by skaters. Are those reflections? Yeah, so we got real real time reflections. Um, the level of detail is just really impressive inside of it. And this is not finished yet. Just as a. <laughs> but it disclaimer. already looks so good. <laughs> yeah. So the ability to have control over the shaders in Unity to push the envelope of like lighting and, you know, materials and things like that, you know, wax marks and. All those things have been a very, very challenging point of making maps before, and we really want to streamline it to be easier. Um, so this is something that we're really focused on as well, is the creators after the fact. We have a game, but like, how do you, like the people that want to make maps, there's so many of them. There's thousands of maps yeah. <laughs> out there. Um, so this is really just a kind of an early viewing of what that facility is going to look like. I'm hoping at some point I can get in on uh, some testing here. <laughs> yeah, and that's a huge important part, right? Testing is going to be absolutely necessary. Uh, we're probably going to do a small testing uh, that's going to only be select amount of people first and then go into, you know, Steam public alpha, like where that will change a lot of stuff. Yeah. But realistically, I can't even give a date. <laughs> um it's really hard to give a date. Our goal is by like the end of the year to have an alpha. That's our goal. We don't know if that's going to be possible, um, but we're going to try. Um, and who knows? It might be earlier. It really depends on the flow of how development goes, how programs are updating and changing. Uh, Unity updates are constantly evolving and making it easier. Um, and Unity is a force to be reckoned with this year, I will say. Thank you for doing this. 
No, I really appreciate it. Thank you for doing this. I was the one asking you, you know. <laughs> I really wanted to get this out there and just learn more about the project. And I think it's just going to be so exciting to see where it goes in, in this year, 2024. You have so much editing to do. I'm sorry. Uh, I <laughs> talked way too much. <laughs> That's so good. We might even do this like four parts or something. I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you to everyone who watched. Mike, is there something you want to leave them with? Um, keep skating. That's it. Be positive. And uh, if you love skateboarding and you want to be early into this world, uh, join our Discord or our Instagram, where we don't post at all on Instagram. But when we do, it hits. So that's all we're focused on there. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one, but if you're interested in realistic skateboarding games, this is definitely one I recommend like sharing a bit around because we, we need to get some hype for this game. I am super excited for it and can't wait to see where it, it ends up at the end. So uh, yeah, big thanks to Mike and everyone at Fake Skate. There'll be their socials in the uh, description, the Discord server you can join. Until the next video in the channel, have it good. Peace out.